as a group, we're going to be doing something good today. So it's good to start out with some quiet time in the mind to remind ourselves that this is what the goodness is all about. So we all have a chance to train our minds to find some happiness inside that's better than the ordinary. So settle down with the breath. Watch the breath coming in, watch it going out. This movement of energy through the body that brings the air in, brings the air out. The air isn't the breath in this meditation. The movement of the energy is. So you watch that energy. It's coming in, going out. It's that energy that keeps us alive, keeps the mind together with the body. And it's where the mind and the body meet. If you're going to understand your mind, you have to watch the breath first. If you're going to understand how the mind has an impact on what the body does and says, you have to watch the breath, because it goes through the breath. So this is a good place to stay. It's like being at a, a watchtower or at a checkpoint. Everything has to come through here. This way you get to see what the mind is doing. What is it up to? Is it up to greed? Is it up to aversion or delusion? Or is it seeing through those things and cutting through them? And when these things come up in the mind, how do they have an impact on the body? Because sometimes if there's greed in the mind, but you can still say, no, okay, there's something going on in there besides just the greed. That's your sense of restraint. And this is what a lot of the goodness is, is restraining ourselves from our old habits and learning new habits in their place. So the path we follow isn't the path down, it's the path up. The path up to true happiness inside. And so always keep this in mind, that goodness comes from the stillness of the mind. If you find that your goodness is getting frayed and it's getting harder and harder to do the right thing or say the right thing or think the right thing, just stop and try to be still for a while. This is what gives strength to the mind. And then you look at your interactions with other people. To what extent could you be more generous? To what extent could you be more restrained in the precepts? Okay, When the mind is strong, it's a lot easier to do these things. It's a lot easier to resist the temptation to fall into your old ways and to build up the qualities that lead you in a better direction. So keep coming back here, coming back here. This is where the important strengths of a good life lie. Because sometimes we think our strength lies in our wealth or it lies in our, Lord knows what, our defense system order. No, our true strength lies in the goodness of the mind. If you don't do any evil, no, no evil is going to happen to you. Now, the fact that there are people who do good and they meet up with unpleasant things in life, and of course, we've got our old karma. But as long as we're not making any new bad karma, that we're providing ourselves with a really solid protection. And we also train the mind so that whatever bad karma does come up, okay, the mind is strong enough to deal with it and not create extra suffering on top. As the Buddha said, too many people, when they get shot with the arrow of unpleasant things in life, then they shoot themselves with another arrow. Not just one arrow, it's many arrows getting all worked up many times over very small things. And even though things are large, there's no need for us to add more suffering on top. So this is why it's good to train the mind. All things good come from the mind. All things honest, all things noble come from the mind. So train the mind to be honest and noble and good, and everything else will follow. <laughs>